Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 19, part B. We are going to do section two of chapter five. And this is one part one or video one of that series. So let's do a quick review. In section one, we talked about the concept of probability. And we said that when the probability value was near one, things are more likely to occur. And when the probability is close to zero, uh, an event is less likely to occur. We also defined using a classic or uh, naive definition of probability as for some event A, then we could say that the probability of A is equal to the number of elements in that event A, which is, and remember, A is a subset of the sample space S. Okay? And so... Um, P of A, or the probability of event A occurring, is the number of elements in A divided by the total number of elements in the sample space F, S. Excuse me. And we can estimate the probability using the relative frequency uh, definition of probability, but it's just an F estimate. This is an estimate of the probability, not exactly the probability. And so... The relative frequency, let's say, of some event A is going to be the number of times that A actually occurs divided by the total number of trials or data points that we collected. So N is still considered our sample size. Okay? And the large law of large numbers says as the sample size N increases, the relative frequency for event A will approach the true probability of A occurring. <clears throat> so the, more, the larger the sample size, the more observations we can collect, the closer our estimates are to the true probability. Then we talked about the complement rule, and this is a very important rule. It helps us uh, find probabilities pretty easily, and in some cases it's the only way we can find the answer. So the complement rule says that if A uh, is an event in S, then its complement, A, C for complement, is everything in S that's not in A. There, A and A complement uh, do not overlap. Okay, they are called disjoint events, which means there's no overlap. Remember that the probability of the whole sample space has to equal 1. So if I know the probability of A, then I know the probability of A complement is going to be 1 minus the probability of A because they have to add up to 1. The probability of A plus the probability of A complement, has to, that, that has to equal 1 because this is the summing the probability of disjoint events. Um, what that's doing is saying this is equivalent to um, all the elements in A and all the elements that are not in A that are in S. So together, those become uh, all the elements in the sample space. So when I add those probabilities, they have to add up to 1. Okay. And we also said that the reason that the, the sam probability of the sample space is equal to 1 is from our definition here. Instead of having some event A, we have S. So in the numerator, we have to put the number of elements in S. And then in the denominator, we always put the number of elements in S. No matter what this value is, they're equal, so they cancel out, and it becomes 1. All right. So let's look at what we're going to cover in this section. We're going to learn how to compute probabilities for compound events. That's two or more events. We're going to look at independent events. We're going to learn how to calculate the probabilities for disjoint or mutually exclusive events. We're going to learn how to calculate conditional probabilities. A conditional probability says that, let's say that uh, if A occurs, some event A actually occurs, then after A occurs, what is the probability that B will also occur? Okay, so that's a conditional probability. We also want to learn first how to use a tree diagram. Then we'll use that to uh, 
show what the multiplication rule is equal to. We'll learn the formula for probability, a conditional probability. And finally, we'll learn the addition rule. And I'm going to add that we're going to include um, from section 3, we're going to include um, uh, permutations and combinations. OK, so let's get started on this section. Let's say that we have some experiment, or um, I don't like the word experiment. The book uses it, but experimental design is completely different. Let's say we have a, um, some process we want to perform or have performed. And this is a statistical process because, again, we don't know what the outcome is until we actually perform it. In this case, we're going to know exactly what the outcomes can be, but we won't know which outcome occurs until we actually perform the process. So we have a jar containing three colors of marbles. There's three green, two red, five blue. So the total, if I add these up, is 3 plus 2 plus 5, which is 10. There's 10 marbles in the jar. Let's assume that we cannot see through the sides of the jar, and let's assume that it's uh, placed above eye level so that we can reach up and reach blindly into the jar without seeing what we're selecting. Okay, And so we will blindly choose one marble, and what we're going to do is we're going to do this randomly. R-D-M-L-Y is my abbreviation for randomly. R-D-M is my abbreviation for random. Okay, so randomly. We're going to kind of swirl the marbles around in the jar and then choose one. That will be blind and random. We're going to, re we're going to record its color, and then this is very important. We're going to return it to the jar. This is called sampling with replacement. So after we've drawn the first marble, we're still, we're going to put it back so there's still 10 total marbles in there. There's still going to be three green, two red, and five blue. <clears throat> then we're going to repeat this process. We're going to blindly and randomly choose another marble from the jar, record its color, and return it to the jar. And so what we want to know is the probability of getting both a red and a green marble in this order. Okay? But we're going to say probability of red and green. So first, we're going to calculate the probabilities of a green, of a red. Red is 2 over 10. There's two red marbles, 10 total. Green, likewise, is going to be 3 over 10 because there's three green and three blue, or three total, or 10 total, I'm sorry. And if we wanted to, we could say the probability of blue is equal to 5 over 10. Now, please do not reduce your fractions. It will make it a lot easier if you just leave them alone. Again, I'm not testing you on whether or not you can reduce fractions or do the algebra so much as I am the statistics. That's what I'm interested in, in this course. You should be able to do the reduction, but that's not um, <clears throat> what I'm focusing on. So I'm not going to grade that, and I don't want you to do that because if you do reduce the fractions, you're going to make it difficult for yourself. This would reduce to one-fifth, and then this would reduce to one-half, and if you have to add these, you'd have to find a common denominator again, and so you're just making work for yourself. So again, in statistics, we rarely reduce the fractions. <clears throat> okay, so how do we find the probability of getting a, gr a red on the first? Oops. <clears throat> so first, we want a red, and then second, we want a green. We'll see why I'm saying it this way in just a minute. So we're going to use something called a tree diagram, mainly because it looks kind of like um, the branches of a tree. So for the first selection, the first marble that we're going to select, we have three possible choices, red, green, and blue. <clears throat> now, I'm going to write the probabilities beside each of these letters so we know exactly which one is which. So the red is going to be two-tenths. <clears throat> Before we make the first selection, we have 10 marbles. Two of them are red. <clears throat> we have three green, so three tenths, and we have five out of 10 for the blue. <clears throat> now, 
I'm putting all the marble I'm putting the marble back in so regardless of which one I selected first <clears throat> I still have red, green or blue <clears throat> as my possible selection the second time and we'll we'll write their probabilities beside them. Now, remember that we've returned the marble so there's two red out of 10, there's still three green out of 10 and there's still five blue out of 10. <clears throat> and the same is true uh, for all of these, red, green, blue, two-tenths, three-tenths, five-tenths. And the same thing here. So we have red, green, blue, two-tenths, three-tenths, five-tenths. <clears throat> now, I'm going to write the sample space using order. So the sample space, <clears throat> and I'm going to do it down one. So S, <clears throat> for this first one, we drew a red and then a red. So I'm going to write it as R, R. You can write commas in here. You could say R and R. I'm going to shorten this to R, R. <clears throat> and then the second one would be R, G, and then R, B. Then we have G, R, G, 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 B, <clears throat> B, R, B, G, and B, B. Now, in section one, we, when we wrote out the sample space, we were saying in that case that all of the um, outcomes had an equal probability. That's not the case here <clears throat> because we're starting out with things that don't have the same probability. They have different probabilities. So how do we get the probability of getting a red and then another red? So the first draw, we have a 2 in 10 chance of getting a red. <clears throat> And then after we've done that, we've got a 2 in 10 chance of also getting another red. So it makes sense that we it was a 20% probability here, and then we take 20% of that. So what we're doing is we're going to multiply these together, and we're going to get 4 over 100. <clears throat> now, all of these fractions in this tree diagram have the denominator of 10. So 10 times 10 is going to be 100. I'm going to go ahead and write that down for all of these. And that way I can just focus on the... Whoops. Wrote that up a little too far. I can focus on the numerator, which is what's going to change. But it's going to be very nice to have the same denominator for all of these so it's going to make adding these fractions easy. If they have the same denominator, you just add the numerator, the numbers on the top. Now I have 2 times 3. So that's 2 times 3 is 6 for the numerator. Okay. 6 over 100. 2 times 5 is going to give me 10 over 100. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 5 is 25. <clears throat> now, let's add up the numerators. I have 4 and 6 is 10, plus 10 is 20, plus 6 is 26, plus 9 is 35, plus 15 is 50, and then 60, 75, 100. So I have 100 over 100, which is 1, which is correct. Now, to answer my question, I'm going to write this as the probability of R and G. So this is going to be RG which is here, and its resulting probability is 6 over 100. And how we got that is we took the probability of R times the probability of G, which was 2 tenths times 3 tenths, which was 6 over 100. But what if I wanted to know what the probability of green and then red was? I go to green, red, which is here, and look, it's the same value. So it doesn't really matter which one was uh, uh, selected first as long as we get um, the same two colors. So whether it's green and red or red and green, the order doesn't matter 
at least when we're sampling with replacement. Okay. <clears throat> so this is our total sample space here. We can choose, we can find any probability that we want for the two colors of marble okay, in the specified order. All right, that's it for this lecture video. Please make sure you update your formula sheet, put the things that you need on there so that you can do your homework quickly and without having to look through all of your notes. Remember that this is your formula sheet, and since there are no tests in the class, um, you can basically have anything on it that you want. So if you want to put definitions of symbols or a little explanation or a brief example, you can do that. As always, if you have questions about the course content, by all means, please ask. Please take care of yourself. Stay safe because we want to see you here next time.